Little did Governor Gretchen Whitmer know when she spoke before midnight last night that she was in line for a surprise. No, no, make that a shocker early Wednesday morning. For weeks in this town, the betting money was that the Senate Democrats, for the first time in 38 years, might take control from the Republicans. Last September 16th, this senator was geeked at the prospects of doing just that. I think we are definitely um, in uh, uh, the favored caucus to take control of the Democratic or that's the Michigan Senate. Meanwhile, over in the House Republican caucus, the campaign chair predicted more than 56 votes for her side to keep control. I'm pretty confident in 60. Wrong. The town was shocked to wake up and see the Democrats with 56 votes giving the D's House control for the first time in 40 years. And for the first time ever, they'll elect this week the first African-American Speaker of the House, Representative Joe Tate of Detroit. Meanwhile, for the governor, all this means instead of groveling for Republican votes to pass her agenda, she theoretically can adopt it without Republican votes with her Democratic votes. Ah, but recall, Democratic Governor Jennifer Granholm got House control under the Democrats, and she, well, she was quick to find out that Democrats being Democrats won't always carry the governor's water. In fact, in some cases, they threw it in her face. Could the same thing happen to Governor Gretchen Whitmer? Of course, but she refuses to focus on that now, and she'll address that problem, Democratic bumps in the road, when and if they pop up. Meanwhile, the legislative Republicans are licking their wounds and wondering if staying hooked up to the former president is such a good strategy, given the blue wave that swamped the Michigan Republican Party up and down the ballot on Tuesday. In Lansing, Tim Skubik, Fox 2 News.